I think we can all agree that Horizon Forbidden West is one of the most beautiful games to be released, and you can't help but stop and take in the world around you. Luckily, we've seen the return of photo mode which will allow us to capture these moments. In this video, I'm going to break down the photo mode features in Horizon Forbidden West, with some being familiar to those who used photo mode in Horizon Zero Dawn. If you'd like to see more of these photo mode videos, don't forget to leave a like and let's go. Let's start with the basic controls. L2 and R2 are used to crane the camera up and down, with the left and right analogue sticks being used to move the camera. If you've managed to capture Aloy in a position you like, but you would prefer it if she was looking directly at the camera or somewhere else, you can do so by clicking L3. This will cause Aloy to follow your camera movements until you click L3 again. Moving on to R3, this is used to toggle the autofocus, but can only be toggled when the depth of field option is enabled. We'll go over this in more detail later in the video. Next up are L1 and R1 to cycle between the different menus with the D-pad being used to select and change the settings. By pressing triangle, it will reset all of the changes that you've made, so be careful as you don't get a warning that you're about to reset everything. And by pressing cross, you can hide the UI. Once you've hidden the UI and are ready to take your shot, you can either press the share button and select screenshot, or you can press and hold the share button until you hear a notification. Taking a look at the first section, we start with precision mode. This is such a useful feature as it slows down the speed at which the camera moves. I find myself using this a lot when I'm doing close-ups, as when you zoom in, the camera moves quite fast, making it harder to place it where you want it so this helps with the finer positioning. The toggle grid option will bring up dividers that will separate the screen into nine equal parts. This feature is used for the rule of thirds technique or for centering your subject. The view row allows you to rotate your shot up to 89 degrees both ways. Camera tilts are used a lot for action shots as it creates a sense of movement and can also be used to create vertical shots that can be rotated once they are moved onto your phone or computer. The hide player option will remove Aloy along with her shadow from your shot. As much as we love Aloy, sometimes it's nice to draw attention to different things. Next up we have the face paints and these are unlocked from the start, unlike in Zero Dawn where you had to complete a new game plus. You can cycle through the different face paints that you unlock throughout the game and choose which one fits the theme of your capture. Along with the face paints we also have facial expressions and this time we have so many more options, ranging from happy, sad and angry, to name a few. These can help to betray a feeling that you are looking to achieve in your shot. We then have the body pose option which will allow you to change Aloy's position. By cycling through these you may find a pose that works perfectly for what you're going for, or you can create a completely new perspective. The last option in this section is Lens Flare. This is one of the features that I was hoping they'd add as it's extremely helpful when taking photos with machines or landscapes. Sometimes Lens Flare can be a great addition to a shot, but sometimes it can be in the way, so having the option to keep this on or turn it off is really nice. Moving on to section 2 we have the lens presets, which are ready-made lenses that you may find useful to start with if you're not too familiar with how depth of field and distance works. You can then adjust the focus distance with each preset, which lets you choose where the focus will be, making everything before and after that point out of focus. Next up is the focal length, which is an artificial zoom that will allow you to change how close you are to your subject. This is mainly used to get close-up shots. When you increase the focal length, you'll be able to get really close to capturing those smaller details. And 
and when you decrease the focal length, you're able to capture much wider shots. If you zoom out fully, it can also cause a fish eye lens like effect, which will give your shot a curved look. We then have the depth of field, which when enabled will give you access to aperture and focus distance. The aperture is used with the focus distance to achieve the level of focus that you want in your shot. It's measured in f-stops, which is the lens focal length. So a high f-stop would mean that more of your shot is in focus, and a low f-stop would mean a more narrow focus in your shot. Coming back to R3, which I briefly covered earlier, it can only be used when the depth of field is enabled. When you click it, you'll see a rectangle in the middle of your screen, which is where the focus will be. You can move the camera around to see what works best, and it will remain on until you click R3 again. In section three, we have some color changes and adjustments. The brightness option will allow you to adjust how light or dark your shot is. This is similar for overexposure, as this will control the amount of light in your shot. Colorize is essentially a filter that you can add with the intensity being how much that filter is applied to the shot. For example, take this black and white filter. At 100% intensity, the shot is completely black and white. At 50% intensity, you'll start to see these muted colours come through. And at 0% intensity, the colours of the original shot have come through as there is essentially no filter being applied. With section 4, we have some time of day adjustments. This remains to be one of my favourite features as it can completely change the mood of your shot. The slider allows you to change the time of day and the ambient light. The daytime will give you vibrant yellow and blues, whereas sunsets and sunrises will give you these stunning pinks, purples and oranges, and the night will give you different tones of blues and greens. You can also use the time of day to change shadows as the sun acts like a big light bulb and you can create some awesome shadow effects. Let me know in the comments if you would like a video on how you can achieve this. The time lapse speed controls how quickly the time of day changes without you moving the time of day slider. This next section will allow you to add some extras to your capture. There are a variety of borders to choose from that can either change the ratio or add other elements like hearts. The small logo option will allow you to place the Horizon Forbidden West logo around the edge of your shot. You can also add a greeting message from the Forbidden West or from your current area. In the final section we have the vignette, which is a shadowy border around the edges of your shot. This is a great way to close in and draw attention to the centre. When you enable this you'll be able to change the size and intensity of the vignette to find what suits the shot best. The higher the size and intensity, the darker the edges will be and the more of your viewer's attention will be drawn to the middle. And that concludes the Horizon Forbidden West photo mode. I hope some of you found this helpful, whether you're new to photo mode or not. And feel free to tag me in your shots, I would love to see them. 
Let me know if there are any specific tips or techniques that you would like me to cover in another video. And if you're interested in cinematics and photo modes from other games, check out my Virtually Kirsty channel. Links will be in the description. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to never miss a video. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.